In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the front screen on the iPhone 15 Pro. Begin, if you can, by powering down the device, and then we're going to get a pentalobe screwdriver and remove these two screws either side of the lightning connector. When I say lightning connector, I mean USB-C connector, obviously. Mistake number one. The easiest way that I've found to remove the screen is by taking a single-sided razor blade, just like this one, and then creating a small gap and pushing straight down at the very bottom of the screen in between the chassis and the screen. Can you see that? That goes in like that. Then we're going to run a bead of isopropyl alcohol along this bottom edge here. And it helps if you use a suction cup attached to the bottom third of the phone, but it's not 100% necessary. But what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to lift the suction cup and sort of pry back on the screen like that. And then that's the seal sort of broken now. And you can see this this screen i don't think has ever been removed i think it's the original but you can see we've separated the screen and we made a gap large enough now to fit this plastic guitar pick in that we're going to very carefully run down this right hand edge if you come across any resistance on that edge and just take some more alcohol and that's just going to help it along so do it that side, then come back on yourself and go along this bottom side too. Sorry, left hand side is what I meant, not bottom side. The screen is almost off here. What you can do now is lift on that, lift the bottom end, wiggle from side to side, and then you'll find that this top unclips and opens like that. Now, <laughs> when I said I don't think this one's been opened before, obviously that is not true. Somebody, El Bato's been here, number 17's been here, and DD has been here. But, it's not a big worry. If you follow the instructions that I told you, then you would have no problems in removing the screen. So now that we're into the phone, ignoring all the parts that have been replaced previously, we're going to remove this shield here. To do that, it's held down by a series of tri-wing screws. We need to remove them one by one. They'll usually stick to a magnetic screwdriver, which helps because they are very small. Remove them one by one until you've got each and every single one out. I think there's six in total. Try and keep them organized as well. I'm placing them on a little magnetic parts tray. I know there's other screws on here, there are other spares, but these are the screws that I've just removed. But yeah, keep, keep them organized because they are various different sizes. And I'm pretty sure this top one, which is a little bit hidden look here, is a little bit bigger than all the rest of them. Remove those. When you take this, um, this shield off, just use some tweezers like this, but you want to be careful. You don't want to just rip it out because if you look closely here, there's like a little latch holding it down. So you just need to sort of lift it up a bit, then slide it out from underneath that cable there. So you don't want to do any damage. But yeah, that's the shield off. Put that to one side. Use a plastic spudger to disconnect the battery connector here. That's going to isolate power from the phone. And it means anything here is safe to touch. We're not going to short circuit anything just by touching it. Next, we can remove the display cable, which is just this one here. Only that one. And then the last cable that we need to remove is this one here. That means that we can now separate the screen from the phone. And as far as I'm concerned, this one goes back as a core part return. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a genuine screen replacement. So it works a little bit different to the aftermarket ones where you have to take this guy off and move it onto a new screen. Instead, the part comes and it looks like this. We got this part from our partner, Mobile Centrix. They are a Apple authorized parts supplier, or is it AASP, or Apple authorized supplier of parts, ASP for short. And yeah, they're affordable and reliable, and they look a little bit like this. I'm gonna be careful with this one because it was stuck in hard. So what I was saying was, it comes with that little top flex there, look, so we don't have to mess about with that. Instead, a quick visual inspection, I would be confident that there's no issues with this. Peel off 
this guy and then keep the packaging because this packaging is going to be used to send this even though it's an aftermarket part this one has to be returned as a core part so it's an exchange we take the new screen and we send back the old screen and we get like a our deposit back essentially you take a small deposit against the screen usually it works out about 20 to 30 quid if you don't send the screen back then you, you get fined essentially you, you have to pay that 20 30 quid so the old screen goes in there and gets sent away for apple to do whatever the hell they do with the screens super easy let's carry on with the job though one little bugbear about these screens they don't come with any adhesive they come with new screws which all right maybe you're going to need them sometimes if you don't keep things organized but they come with a new screen they come with that top flex there but there's nothing to stick it down with so just bear that in mind if you're buying a single screen and you don't have a wall full of adhesives for for phones that you might need to order one of those as well moving on this adhesive it's not to be reused it looks as though it's been reused a few times already so I'm going to just go ahead with a number 4A X-Acto blade and very carefully remove the old adhesive. This one's a little bit, I think the blade's a bit blunt. So I'm going to use a fresh X-Acto blade and very carefully work my way around, scraping off all the adhesive that's left behind from the previous screen. I'll fast forward this bit or skip to it being done and then we'll show you how to do the final clean and how to install the new piece of adhesive. So I've just worked around with the blade and cleared everything up. There's just that last bit here. Just a little side note, when you get to the top, there's a little bit of mesh for the air speaker. Do not lose it. It's not good if you lose it. You know what, I'm gonna leave that until last. In the meantime, Let's get some more isopropyl alcohol along this edge and you can use a cotton board or a clean room wipe but you just want to get right in and give it all a good scrubbing off deep into the edge and make sure that it's nice and clean. So work all four edges with the isopropyl alcohol just make sure that it's nice and clean and you'll see why I didn't stick that little bit of mesh on or we'll put that mesh back on just there because I would, I would have rubbed it straight back off. Now that it's clean, we're going to get one of these seals that looks just like this. Don't mistake it for the back cover seal. It's a little bit thicker and it won't fit properly. I'm sure you could probably use it if you were stuck, but just get the right seal. This is a front glass adhesive. Stick it down. Make sure that it fits right into the edges. It can sometimes be a little bit awkward like this corner here. Just don't want to sit in right. It's quite, they're quite thick, these adhesives. So just make sure that it's right. What you can use as well is the flat edge of the spudger. You can just push it down, make sure that it sits nice and flat here, all the way around. And then you'll be able to grab hold of one corner and then lift up the first of the blue sheets. Did you see the top? It sort of came along with it. If you push down as you're lifting up, then you'll not have this problem. Oh, actually, all the adhesives come with it this time. Bit of a fumble of an adhesive, that one. I um, do apologise, guys, but it's in line and it's stuck down. So I'm not going to waste another quid, quid 50. Taking it off and adjusting it. I think someone caught me raging on a previous video. But yeah, it can be frustrating, these adhesives, when they don't go your way like anything but yeah that's all off peeled looking nice i'll just sort this tidy that bit up there it serves a purpose at the end of the day so you don't want gaps in it you don't want unevenness there we go that looks better so just going back to that little mesh clean it up and then line it up the top once you've got your adhesive on it should sit quite nicely on top of it and that's ready for the new screen. So as we discussed earlier, the new screen comes pretty much just ready to plug and play. It's very, very easy. Line up and connect the screen connector. 
line up and connect this one up here so with everything reconnected we can now connect the battery and then we're going to reuse the shield and at this point we've got options we can either use the screws that come with the screen or we can reuse the screws that we took out i know that's the most economical now we're going to screw it down using the screws we took out now just make sure that each and every screw goes back to where it belongs like i said when we we're taking them out there are different sizes of screw and if you put a long screw where a short screw belongs you will have problems it's called long screw damage a very original name and it's something that you want to avoid when you're repairing any phone especially an expensive one like the iphone 15 pro just having a little battle with this little screw here and then the last one goes up in this top corner and because the blue film came off the adhesive earlier this is ready just to close up when we close it up i'm going to line up the top first so make sure it's the same as we did in reverse look make sure that the top's lined up then we can push down on the edge and then this edge and we're just going to make sure that the bottom's sat nice and flush all flat no big gaps looks pretty decent to me and then i'm going to plug it in hang on no i'm not we might as well just finish the job entirely first so we'll put these two bottom screws in in the bottom of the phone tighten them up with this guy and then i'm pretty sure that this phone is on a version of ios what will let me calibrate this to do that i'm going to press and hold the down volume and up volume at the same time so pressing and holding them and then i'm going to plug it into a power delivery cable this is a 20 watt plug with a 60 watt cable on it once we get the apple logo come up i always hold it for a few seconds then i release these two and what we should get in any minute now is diagnostic mode just bear with it it is a little bit slow so it's on 18.6.2 that may be out of date by the time you watch this video but just make sure that your ios software is up to date on the latest version of ios agree to the terms and conditions then we're going to choose finish repair it will then do this configuring thing while it works out what parts have been replaced and then eventually it'll throw up that the screen's been replaced and the back glass too apparently now it's going to configure the parts which should then leave us with a fully calibrated screen ready to go back to the customer choose restart and then i'll show you what it looks like in settings once the phone boots back up and we can see we have got a genuine display changed on this day thanks for watching see you in the next video i know this job's complete now but just a little side note for the end of this video this is how these screens come look at these ripples and stuff this is new from apple for self-installation it's just a bit scabby don't you think